this project has a lot of different components. And when you turn on the slide switch, they will all come on. And for the most part, they pulsate. It might be hard to tell, although it's easier with the camera. The LEDs and bulbs pulsate. They're not on continuously. The meter also vibrates back and forth a short distance. And the way the motor sounds, it's not on continuously. This circuit is called the ENS blinker. The seven segment display alternates between a capital E and a capital S. You can see how the uh, letter on the display quickly changes. It's S longer than it is E. You could uh, like uh, pretend that the S and the E both stand for something like Southeast. And the alarm integrated circuit is controlling the flashing. Having modified the previous circuit, I made a two and three blinker. Now the display will alternate between the numbers two and three. And you could pretend that stands for 23. This is the nine and zero blinker. When I turn on the slide switch, the seven segment display alternates between the numbers nine and zero. And you could pretend that they form the number, the larger number 90. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, the display switches between the numbers three and six, which could form the larger numbers 36 or 63. This is the C and C blinker. When I turn on the slide switch, the display will alternate between a lowercase c and a capital C. And I believe this is the first of the letter switching displays, if you know what I mean. In this circuit, the seven segment display alternates between a capital O and a lowercase o. When I turn on the slide switch, the display switches between the lowercase b and the lowercase d. With this circuit, the display switches between the capital H and the capital L. And the H can stand for high and the L could stand for low, like high-low. And a great example of this is on a weather map where blue capital H's represent high-pressure systems, while red capital L's indicate low pressure systems. Finally is the capital A and capital O blinker. When I turn on the slide switch, the display alternates between the capital A and the capital O. As you can see in this circuit, the decimal point also lights due to the wiring of the circuit. This is an open and closed indicator. When I turn on the slide switch and there's adequate light on the photoresistor, the display reads a, a capital O. But when light on the photoresistor falls below a certain point, the O changes to a capital C. The capital O can stand for open, while the capital C stands for closed. And the purpose of this circuit is to indicate whether a door is open or closed. For it to work, you should place the uh, circuit in a dark room in an area where 
uh, if you open the door to the room, light from outside can reach the photoresistor and change the uh, C to an O, indicating that the door is open. Then when you shut the door, the room goes dark again and the O changes back to the letter C. I placed the circuit in the shoe box. Now light is shining directly on the photoresistor. Now when I, as I shut the lid, the display will read a capital C, indicating that the lid to the box is closed. Then when I open the uh, box and there's adequate light on the photoresistor, the display reads O, indicating that the lid is open. This is another open and closed indicator. However, it uses the press switch instead of the photoresistor, and rather than telling you whether a door is open or closed, it tells you whether or not a circuit is open or closed. There's a smaller circuit within the big one that uses the U4 amplifier. Right now, the circuit is open, and the display shows a capital O. However, when I push and hold down the press switch, the circuit is closed, and the display changes to a capital C. And when I release the press switch, the C changes back to an O because the circuit is open again. Right now, the amplifier has no power running to it, but when I push the press switch, the voltage within the amplifier increases enough to turn off the, right, uh, the two right segments on the display as well as the green LED. For the variant, I replaced the press switch with the whistle chip, and now when there's enough vibration, the display may change from a capital O to a capital C. It's better if I shake the circuit like this, and you can see how the display sw switches to a C. You just have to do it right, but try not to break the circuit. This is the vibration sounder. When I turn on the slide switch, the motor spins and it will generate an AC voltage that lights the green LED. But as you can see, the lamp does not light. Now, I am going to put the fan on the motor and See the difference. The LED stays off, but now the lamp comes on. You can also hear the high tone of the spinning motor. To me, it kind of sounds like a jet engine from inside the plane. This is the SCR noise circuit. Turning on the slide switch won't do anything, but when I push the press switch, the motor will spin and the red LED will come on. Now I'm going to hold down the press switch and while the green LED turns off, you hear more sound from the motor coming through the speaker. Release the press switch and the sound stops. Now to turn off the circuit, you have to turn the slide switch off and then to reset it, turn it back on again. This is the SCR and transistor switch. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. I'm going to push and hold down the press switch, and both lamps come on. However, when I release the press switch, only the L2 lamp remains lit. The L1 lamp goes off. If I want to turn the L1 lamp back on, I have to push and hold down the press switch, like before. The, S, the Q3 diode is what allows the L2 lamp to remain lit even after I release the press switch. But to turn that off, I have to turn off the slide switch altogether. This is a two-speed motor. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Then when I push and release the press switch, the L2 lamp lights dimly and the phantom motor spin at... A relatively low speed but when I push 
and hold down the press switch, the phantom motor spin faster. That's why this is a two-speed fan, a two-speed motor. Releasing the press switch slows the phantom motor down. This is another two-speed motor, except in this project, pushing and holding down the press switch decreases the speed of the motor and fan rather than increase it. That's because, unlike the previous project, where the Q3 diode and Q2 transistor are wired in series, in this circuit, they're wired in parallel. So pushing the press switch will turn on the Q2 transistor, which lights the L1 lamp and increase, decreases the voltage for the motor. When I turn on the slide switch, the motor spins clockwise and the meter on the low setting deflects all the way to the right. The low, the lower battery pack is currently connected. But when I turn off the slide switch and push and hold down the press switch, the motor spins counterclockwise and the meter deflects all the way to the left, the needle going below zero because the upper battery pack is connected. Finally, when both switches are on, the motor stops and the voltage meter drops to zero, but both lamps come on because the battery packs are both connected in series now. Then releasing it, the press switch will allow the motor to spin clockwise again. This is an AM radio with power LEDs. When I turn on the slide switch, first I'm going to put the adjustable resistor in the middle position. The red and green LEDs come on and they will flicker as I use the adjustable capacitor to tune the radio. Now, like other radios, this is a very crude one. So you may hear nothing more than static. But the purpose of this project is to include the red and green LEDs in the radio. And you can see them flickering. This circuit allows you to record a small piece of a sound from the space for integrated circuit. First turn on the slide switch, you hear a beep. And then after the second beep, turn off the slide switch and push the press switch to play back the sound. And then one of three Christmas songs built into the recording integrated circuit will play. Now for the second part of the project, remove this two snap wire, turn on the slide switch again, and then turn it off after hearing the beeping sound. Push the press switch and you hear a different sound this time. I'll do it one more time with the uh, two snap wire in place because it will change the sound once more. The sounds might remind you of those from a space theme video game. 